So as we promised, in studio this evening, we have a beauty queen with us. As soon as she walked in, you just know. And she's, she's complete with a crown and everything. And if you head over to hashtag h 984 you will see the picture. She looks absolutely amazing. She goes by the name of Marion Bakoya. And she is Miss Kenya USA. And she looks absolutely regal, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for coming to studio today. She's going to be telling us about all the different projects that she's going to be working on while here. About the journey to winning the crown and how... And, and what inspired her to get into that journey in the first place? Welcome to the show. This is hashtag h 984 I'm Anita. That is Tracy. We're the noisemakers every evening um, on this particular station, which is the best mix of music. Yes, you go. Thank you so much, Anita. <laughs> you know, being here is such an honor. I'm so happy to finally be here. Angela has said so many great things about this show so I'm so excited to share my journey oh Angela Moirore who's one of our news readers also happens to be a former Miss yes. Kenya USA by the way she is. we've got a lot of beauty queens in the studio right now yes yeah, so there's actually three queens in Kenya right now there's Angela there's Fozia Mohammed, she was the 2015 queen, and then there's myself. Nice. Oh, fantastic! Yes. All right. It, so, uh, oh, Tracy. No, go, go ahead. It's okay. Oh, uh, okay. So, <laughs> tell, uh, so tell us about yourself for those who have not, um, you know, who are, who have not acclimatized to knowing who you are yet. So, my name is Marion Bahoya. Mm -hmm. I am a personal trainer. I live in New York City, and I am a PhD student. So, I'm juggling those three things right now. I'm passionate about fitness, supporting children, mm. and the arts and fashion. And it's so interesting because you've actually mi mixed it too, yes. right? And uh, how important is a fitness to you and how has it changed your life? Were you always a fitness junkie or did you just or wake up one day? Like one like, January oh, and you're like, resolution for this year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, so I grew up with brothers. So they were always playing football, always outside, always riding bikes. So for me, it just naturally came because, you know, my environment, my brothers did those things. And so when I was a kid, I played basketball I played soccer I played tennis and then I continued those things throughout college and even now all right nice what soccer team do you support Arsenal <laughs> all right I'm done with this interview thank you very much um it's been great knowing you um, <laughs> all right cool so um one of the things that you're, the mo you're very very passionate about is um children um engaging in activities to keep themselves healthy as far as sports is concerned and extracurricular activities did this come about um prior to the crown or after the crown this came prior to the crown so the research that i do now in my phd program is about promoting physical activity in children we know that's connected to strong bone health mental health cardiovascular health and so those traits that you lie the foundation in childhood continue into adulthood mm -hmm. so we know that there is a rising trend in obesity and you have to nurture those skills at a young age before they become problems especially for girls mm. we know that girls don't usually participate and there's a steep drop off in adolescence where girls say they don't want to sweat they don't want to run they don't want they don't feel comfortable with their bodies and so it's about encouraging those things to prevent those diseases that come on in later in life Nice. Speaking of, um, and this is probably the, probably the most rude thing I'll ever say, and I'm very curious though. Do you think there needs to be a law that um, lets fast food restaurants turn away obese people? That's discrimination. It is? Yes. But then you see, it gets to a point where like, when is, well, when is enough is enough? You know what I mean? Because like, um, th they, they do need help. They do need help. It gets yes. to a point where there's been a lot of deaths um, related to obesity and you know consuming all the wrong types of food. Yes. So should there just should there be some sort of I don't know, maybe not a law, but just a point where they say, okay, so sorry, now you can't have an entire bucket, but you can have two pieces. <laughs> <laughs> only two pieces but you know so food is so interesting because it's also cultural mm -hmm. and also it comes from a mental state so some people although they're obese there's a number of things going on inside their head okay. and so um there's this idea of impulsivity so your tendency to be impulsive and mm -hmm. so some people it's with food some people it's with drugs some people it's with money and so it starts with your mental state of mind so to say oh you can't have chicken because you're fat we're, t we're not looking at the right issue okay. it starts in your mind it is in the your body is just the the symptom okay yeah all right i've always been curious about that but then i was like i, I don't know how to craft this <laughs> of all the times i could ask i said it to ask today i was just like well, i was just curious <laughs> but yeah i absolutely ten thousand percent understand what you mean so tell us about your journey to the crown and what made you decide i want to i want to participate in mess uh, hey, wow and mess <laughs> In Miss Kenya USA. Miss Kenya USA. I actually saw Angela do the crown Ooh. several years ago. And I was like, wow, she's really gorgeous. She's very talented. And, you know, <laughs> she had a great 
essence about her. And yeah. I was like, this is so motivating. I think I want to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And so I actually competed in 2015. I lost horribly, as in didn't even make top 10, mm -hmm. as in like shattered my <laughs> dreams. And then, so I came back in 2018 mm -hmm. and then here we are. And everything happened. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. I'm really curious to know what you think about R. Kelly because, you know, a lot, we, we can talk, we can go on and on about R. Kelly, but then one thing that uh, stood out is the fact that a lot of people are like, this is more of a black community kind of like situation because if the girls were white, then w this would have been a different situation. It would have been but because they're black, you know, this is this is dragging yeah. 20 plus years yeah. on so what do you think I does race color is it playing a role in um this r kelly I story do, i do think race and color plays a role into it because people see r kelly as an icon like the black r&b the guy who played all the hits and even after the songs came out people were still stepping in the name of love and so i think um, we've seen the Harvey Weinstein cases. Mm -hmm. We've seen the Bill Cosby. Even with the Bill Cosby cases, there was controversy because he was such a role model. And there's already um, a negative image of black men. Mm -hmm. And so I think people struggle with holding black men accountable, even in cases where it's someone who is their hero or an artist who they look up to. And, you know, it's so funny. We thought it was so light, light and, and, you know, it was so... It's so easy wearing it, but Jesus Christ, that crown. It's heavy. And then, um, so um, Marion was explaining to us. So we have Marion, Miss Kenya USA in studio with us right now. She's explaining to us that, um, so first of all, you said every beauty queen get, gets her own crown that she keeps for the rest of her life. Yes. That is so cool. I used to think that every year when you go to hand over the crown, you give it back. No. So every crown is supposed to be as unique as the girl who receives it. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Well, this is as unique as you are. And thank, thank you. you so much for letting us borrow it for a whole bunch of Insta stories, Absolutely. Snapchats and pictures. And it's really heavy. And then it has these um, things on the inside, which you use bobby pins to hold the crown onto your head. So then, of course, us being us, we were trying to wear it in a G way, like wearing it on to the, the side and, and stuff like that. Not we, you. Okay, fine, me. But it, it, it sounds better <laughs> when I make it sound like I was not the only one trying that. So, yeah, so that's what we've been doing behind the scenes. And you can catch everything that we've been doing behind the scenes um, on Capital TV on YouTube, hashtag H&H984. &H so, Marion, there is something that you're in the country to do. There's a fundraiser that you're trying to put together. So tell us about that. So I'm working with One Vibe Africa, mm -hmm. and their mission is to support youth in the arts. Mm -hmm. So this, it's called Young Generation Center. So it originally started as an orphanage in 1998. Mm -hmm. And so there were some issues where it started to be demolished, and um, the owners decide to now renovate it to create it as a center for the arts. So they do, they expose children to the arts, to music, to photography. A couple years, Saudi Soul came down and did nice. a music mentorship um, program with the kids. And now we're renovating the fashion department to, you know, teach the children more about tailoring and the fashion industry. Okay, and then I want to ask you something that came up during Miss Universe. So there's been this controversy where um, a few beauty queens in um, Kenya and Africa in general felt that as far as um, pageants like Miss Universe go, it's usually very rare to find a black girl making it all the way to the top five. And usually by the time um, an African, for example, makes the top five or even wins, they're usually biracial. What's your take on that? I think the I think the ready the world is ready for a black beauty queen. I think that the, tr the tr traditional standard has been a fair-skinned, long, straight-haired queen, but I think the world is now ready for even a natural-haired queen with braids. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no. No, for sure. Actually, because there's never been one, ever. No. So um, in this particular Miss Universe, who were you um, rooting for? Miss Kenya. Oh, yeah, I know. And yeah. then she, she, didn't, she didn't make it to the top 20, and I was really sad about I that. I know, I was really sad. And even in the categories that they have, um, so like there was Asia, Africa, there was the United States, there was Europe, there was, um, there was whatnot. Do you feel that there should be, there should just be a category for Africa and not put us in the same category as Asia? Because you see how they did it was um, in, it, there were five people in each category and only the South African made it. Yes, and it's, it's funny, right? Because there's so many different areas in Africa. There's Northern Africa, there's East, there's West. I don't think that that's enough. I think we should break it up into regional parts of Africa because they're so diverse. Each part of the continent is so different. 
um, how, how different would you want the pageants in Kenya to be done in order to prepare our girls to be at the same pedestal as the girls who normally compete at Miss Universe? I think it all depends on what your service is because this role is a service so i think the emphasis should not just only be on modeling and beauty Mm. but what you represent what you stand for which organization you are contributing to what your mission is what's your purpose so i think it's the it should be less emphasis on the beauty and more about the role of service yeah Okay. Like we told you early on the show, beauty, brains, just a whole lot going on, and it's all great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, if they want to reach you on social media, probably find out about the fundraiser. Yes, and um, how they can how contribute. they can contribute. Where do they find you? Find me on Instagram as mb lifted, on Twitter as mb lifted one, and also follow One Vibe Africa. Yay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming through. Do you have any parting shots before you leave? Yes. I just want to give a big shout out to my family, to John and Kulola for always their kind words and support, to Angela, to One Vibe Africa, and to the whole Miss Kenya USA family. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so for much. having us.